scripture to you that I was thinking about this morning. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 2. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm going to read the entire chapter. <clears throat> it says, And I, when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaim, proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. And my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Yet among the mature we do impart wisdom, although it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away. But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit of that person, which is in him. So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. And we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the spirit, interpreting spiritual truth to those who are spiritual. The natural person does not accept the things of the spirit of God, for they are folly to him. And he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but is himself to be judged by no one. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. <clears throat> so I recently had a conversation with someone. And, uh, you know, they were saying, what if you encounter a person that starts questioning you about your Christianity and, and starts asking you all these things about God and, and, and knowledge. And one thing that I have come to realize and understand as I continue this journey <clears throat> is that I am not going to misquote scripture just so that I can prove a point or try to have an answer for <coughs> some question. I'd rather just say, I cannot answer you this question because I do not know the scripture in full, than just come up with something that is gonna make me look like a fool. And I was thinking about that and it brought me to the scripture because to me, that shows some of that wisdom that God has given me all the revelation that I am supposed to get from scripture, he will give it to me when I'm supposed to have it. Mm -hmm. So just because I read a scripture and I memorized it, that doesn't mean that I understand what it means. Mm -hmm. So I'm not just gonna go and start quoting scripture to people when I don't know the meaning of it. <clears throat> Proverbs 17, verses 27 and 28 said, whoever restrains his words has knowledge and he who has a full spirit is a man of understanding. Even a fool who keeps silent is considered wise. When he closes his lips, he is deemed intelligent. Well, I know I've been a fool many times, but I'd rather be deemed intelligent by staying quiet. <clears throat> I lost my train of thought. rather than just go out and start babbling. Mm -hmm. I know <coughs> when my time comes to go out and start doing these things, I know that I have been doing a little, you know, with a few people here and there, but this is a journey we're being prepared, we're being schooled in here, we're being trained 
on how to be representatives of Jesus on this earth so we can go out and actually share with people the absolute truth instead of an apparent truth that we think we know just because we memorize some scriptures rather than allowing the spirit to work in us and reveal to us what we're supposed to know. So I encourage you uh, to continue to seek him and let the Holy Spirit guide you and reveal to you what you are supposed to know for whatever particular situation. You know, Suzanne was talking about how we're supposed to pray based on what the word says. Well, sometimes, I don't know a particular scripture that applies to something that's going on in my life that I should be praying according to that scripture. So I changed my prayer to, Lord, reveal to me what is the word that you gave us that applies to this situation so that I can pray about it and stand on it because that's your truth. And that's how things start coming to me. Uh, So I encourage you to do the same if you don't already do it. Uh, I love how the Lord continues to change my life every day and all these amazing things continue to happen, you know, right in front of my eyes for, you know, scripture being fulfilled for for my life. Uh, So that's what I've been thinking about these past few days. And... I want to share that with you guys. Amen. (laughs) Any prayer requests or testimonies? Suzanne.
Mr. Myron, who's uh, home uh, with illness, and Sir Neves, uh, playing uh, short foot this morning, too. So, how are we doing? Benevolence, uh, having some vision, too, and ask for prayer.
to the Lord this morning. Father, we thank you for bringing us together here and gathering in your name. We thank you, Lord, because when we don't know what to pray, you give us the words through your spirit, Lord, that we should utter, that we should speak.
Hallelujah. 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 You came to mind about four hours ago, Alvin. So, Lord's up to something. With our war crier, Rita, gone today. Uh, Eric, you going to step in her place? Yeah. <laughs> There's a uh, worship uh, team in England, uh, Godfrey Bertel. One of his songs talks about a war cry, and uh, several of them on their worship team just cut loose. And someday we'll get to that range, but uh, yeah, she's she's a she's a horrible crier. God bless her <coughs> for her health, and just don't keep silent this morning. If you you keep silent, the rocks are gonna cry out. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> Make it, a little, make it a little loud here this morning, but that's okay. We just love our Jesus. We just love our Jesus. We just love our Jesus. Because every knee will bow, every tongue confess, Jesus Christ. Can't stop praising his 
name, I just can't stop. Praise this name, I just can't stop. Praise this name, Jesus. Can't stop. Praise this name, I just can't stop. Praise this name, I just can't stop. Praise this name, Jesus. Come on, Soprano, sing it out. Can't stop. Praise this name, I just can't stop. Praise this name, I just can't stop. Praise this name, Jesus. Sing it out. Can't stop. Praise this name, I just can't stop. Praise this name, I just can't stop. Praise this name, Jesus. I'm so 
Help us with this new song. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship in one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah to our God. Every
and the bread will increase enlarging our path every mountain and high hill at your presence oh Lord streams and rivers
and the bread will increase. Enlarging our path, every mountain I hill, every mountain and high hill, at your presence, O oh Lord, streams and rivers. Let your voice be heard. 
God. Let's praise the Lord right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. you. May be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, Mike. Praise God. You can give them a hand clap. They do a good job. Praise God. Praise God. Appreciate them being sensitive to the Lord. Amen. God is good. Sunday school kids, you can be dismissed. Thank you, everybody, for being here this morning. God bless all of you. And God's going to do wonderful things in your life. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Amen. We're going to start, Roberto, in Ephesians chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. Thank the Lord. Verses 1 and 2, and then we're going to go to 5, Roberto, just so we don't be ahead of the game here. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Verse 5, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us or made us alive (coughs) together with Christ. By grace, you are saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now let's go to Ezekiel chapter 37, and we'll read just verses 1 and 2 to begin with here. Ezekiel 37, verses 1 and 2. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, They were very dry. Praise God. You know, uh, I think sometimes, because we are human, we have a tendency to kind of go to extremes in anything we are involved in. But we talk about being in the spirit, and uh, a lot of times we think that just means we're acting different, strange, you know, kind of unusual. That isn't really what it's about. It's okay, I get it. You know, I mean, I get excited too, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just a way of our flesh trying to express what's going on in our spirit. But I just preface what I'm going to say by, by saying this, that when you got born again, it was grace that saved you. Your spirit was born again. Perfect. It's never going to get any better than it is that it was the moment you accepted Christ, the moment you trusted in Jesus as your Savior. But your body is another thing, praise the Lord, your flesh, your mind, your, your emotions, you know, and your physical self. That thing takes grace every day, yes. every minute of every day for the rest of your life. Now, your spirit doesn't need grace anymore because it's perfect. But you, your body, your natural part, amen, your humanity needs grace, praise God. And that's where I'm trying to get go with this this morning, and I hope I can uh, try to make some sense out of some things that seem to create confusion, I think, in the body, and uh, I, I don't I don't want us dealing with, I don't want us being just weird for the sake of being weird. You know what I mean? I mean, we're weird, and we can't do anything about that, right? I mean, the, weird, the weirdness of who we are individually is just, that's a fact, and you can't change it. But I'm talking about trying to operate in the spirit and being weird just for the sake of being different than what we would be in our body and think that that somehow impresses people or makes people think that there's something going on that they otherwise wouldn't believe. Okay? We got a body, we're in, a, in the human form, and we're in this world for a reason. If we could do this without the body, we wouldn't have one, praise the Lord. We'd already be totally spirit and out of here. But God has something unique going on here because not only do we have a body now, we're going to have a body forever. We're not going to be independent spirits just out here floating somewhere. We are going to have bodies. 
They're going to be glorified bodies, which really means that they just, first of all, they'll never die. But secondly, and maybe just as importantly, they're, they're going to reflect God. They're going to be a revelation of the reality and the goodness and the totality of God forever and ever and ever. Amen. Because how many of you know God's invisible? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. The only thing anybody's ever seen of God is Jesus. Yeah. That was God in flesh. So with that in mind, let's see if we can make some sense out of this. In Ezekiel's vision, God revealed that these dry bones represented the nation of Israel. If we go on and read that, we'll, we'll touch on some of that in a little bit. But that's what it was representative of. Amen. And their hope was gone. They were as good as dead as far as they were concerned. Amen. But God also told Ezekiel that he planned to open the graves and bring Israel back to life. Praise the Lord. And this story is a metaphor for the spiritually dead. Praise the Lord. All right. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 3. Roberto. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord, thou knowest. Praise the Lord. He's asking, can the spiritually dead be revived? And now for us, this, this isn't a, a theoretical or abstract kind of question because remember, when God saw us in Ephesians, we just read it there a moment ago, he saw us as dead people. Yes. Remember that movie, The Sixth Sense? Yes. He says, the psychiatrist, I mean, it's a bizarre thing. It took me, I think, twice before I realized that he was dead. But anyway, uh, the psychiatrist is talking to this young boy who has, he's seeing dead people. And he tells the guy, he said, I, he said, what's the problem? He said, I see dead people. He said, oh, you mean when you're dreaming, you have dreams? And he said, no, I see dead people everywhere. Praise the Lord. God saw dead people. Praise the Lord. Everywhere. Up walking around, but they were dead. Praise the Lord. So can dry, dead bones come back to life? Or is spiritual death the end of everything? Can, can fallen humans be restored not just to life, but to being fully human? Because dead people are walking around. So we're not talking about having a body and just being able to motivate. We're talking about being fully alive, being alive with God. Praise the Lord. God tells Ezekiel that the dead, dry bones can come back to life. Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 7 and 8. I'm not trying to be strange here or, or just for the sake of being different. This is important because we miss so much of what God is doing because we're always looking for something spectacular or something supernatural in our mind, what we think of as being supernatural or being extremely spiritual, when in fact God says, look, I put my spirit in a body so that you can function, amen, spiritually. Yes. Now, if he wanted us just to be ethereal beings and floating around here being strange, he just wouldn't have bothered with the body. <laughs> just let them be spirits. Yes. Come on. Praise God. You're going to have a hard time dealing with an unbeliever if you're Praise the Lord. Because they're just going to think you've got a problem and don't know it. <laughs> and whatever it is you've got, they don't want. Exactly. Praise the Lord. I mean, it's great for us because we get it. You know, we understand the, the stuff. But they don't, and that's who it's for. We're supposed to be living by faith. Praise God. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking and the bones came together, bone to his bone, right? When I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came together upon them, and the skin covered them above. But there was no breath in them. Praise the Lord. So bones, they reassemble, but there still isn't any life in them. And the analogy is, this is what happens when we think it's our work that brings God's life to us, or righteousness, or supernatural, right? It's just a lot of effort 
but we're still dead. Yeah. We're still operating dead. So 37 verses 9 through 14 now, Roberto. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came unto them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We're, out of, we're cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves, cause you to come up out of your graves, and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves. And I shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live. And I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. Praise God. So our best efforts, our best efforts are never enough. Just not going to get it done. Praise the Lord. But go to Matthew chapter 19 and verse 26. Now back to what I was saying before while Roberto's pulling this scripture up. When, when Jesus was going around ministering, he would, uh, he'd come up to somebody and he'd say, no, he would say, what do you want me to do? Yeah. Yeah. Lord, that I might see. Yeah. And what would Jesus do? Well, he'd spit in my eyes and rub my No, he would say, open your eyes. Go to the pool. Wash. Amen. The guy with the withered hand, did he, what did he do? Did he do a Holy Ghost flip out? Or did he just say, stretch forth your hand? Yeah. Get up and walk. He was very human yes. in his spirituality. Right. We, on the other hand, get to act in all kinds of crazy thinking that it's going to motivate that individual to be healed. Look, you can't, you can't heal them. No. All the gyrations and all of the and all that is not going to heal anybody. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's what's going to heal them, and all you've got to do is believe yes. that reality is going to come to pass. Yes. Now, he might ask you to do some crazy things sometimes. I remember Don talking about them marching around and standing on the Bible. Okay, when he gives you a specific thing to do, do it. Come on. Like when he spit the guy's eyes and put mud in. But that wasn't a typical thing. That was just a, he was trying to make a point to the people that were around him. But the vast majority of the time, this is just about being naturally who we are, supernatural. The moment we start doing this other stuff, we lose our authenticity as far as I'm concerned. Now, I've been all through that. I, I've, I was right. saved in a Pentecostal. I'm not against, this is not a, against Pentecostalism or against spirit, you know, motivated kinds of, of behaviors. But I'm saying recognize it for what it is. Yes. Don't try to make it the thing right. that's going to create something or cause something to happen. Yes. We got a guy here, Elijah, or Ezekiel, I should say. There's multitudes of prophecies and all kinds of giftings and Holy Spirit. He didn't have the Holy Ghost, but the Spirit would come on him and move on him. This guy, he just said, the Lord said, can these bones live? And he said, I don't know. You're, the, you're God, right? And then God does what he does with us. He says, look, yes, I can do this, but I'm not going to do it. You're going to do it prophesy yeah. to these bones. Yes. He didn't say get all weird and bizarre. He just said start speaking to these bones yes. and tell them yes, you yes. will live. Yes. Call the breath of God. Call the, the wind to come and breathe on them. Yes. Amen. That they may live. Hallelujah. Alright, Matthew chapter 19 verse 26. Jesus beheld them and said unto them with men, this is impossible. But with God all things are possible. Praise the Lord. John chapter 14 and verse 6. We, praise the Lord, we don't want to be a replication of something that came along 1,500 years after Jesus or 1,800 years or 200 years or 500 years. We want to be a, a replication or a representation of God. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Praise the Lord. 
All right, Jesus didn't come to make us Christians. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus came to make us fully human. This mess, mess your theology up a little bit, but just bear with me. Praise the Lord. To live a fully alive, fully human life is what we got born again for. Amen. Praise the Lord. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. We'd be floating around somewhere in the ether world, amen, messing with satellite signals and the Internet. Yeah. Praise the Lord. But we're not. Amen. Amen. So the question we ought to be asking is not, are you a Christian? Instead, the important question is, are you more fully human? Are you a transformed presence? Praise the Lord. Because all humans everywhere are created by God and in God's image. I'm not saying they're all saved. I'm just saying everybody was created in the image of God after his image. Praise the Lord. John chapter 1, uh, verse 1 and then we'll go to verse 14. So John 1, 1 to begin with. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Verse 14. And the Word was made flesh. This God that was in the beginning, that was the Word, became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Praise the Lord. So when God became human in the person of Jesus Christ, God's intention was to restore humankind. Yes. Humanity. Not just spirits, but humanity. Yes. Praise the Lord. So, the incarnation, or, or you could say the humanization of God in Jesus settled this issue once and for all. It's not the body that's evil. Oh, I thought that would get your attention. Because the fallen spirit that inhabits that body, it is what was evil. That's what had to be born again. That's what was created perfect, amen, at your new birth. Praise the Lord. We put a lot of emphasis on the body, but the emphasis that we put on the body is wrong. There should be some emphasis there, but it needs to be the right emphasis. It needs to be for the right reason. God's intention is our human nature be made complete spiritually. Praise God. And then our spiritual nature be made complete in the flesh. That's what it's going to be. That's his intention now. Again, back to John 1. 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Right? Verse 14 again. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Praise the Lord. You follow what's being said here? This body is to be full of grace and truth. Praise the Lord. So the creator of the universe has stepped into our human story right here on earth to recreate humans so that we can again reflect God's image as it was meant to be from the beginning. You cannot do that without a body because all these dead people are looking at bodies. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. Actually, this is very simple once you start seeing it. Maybe you already do, but I'm just saying once you start seeing it through the context of what God is doing in Christ, we know that's what he wants to do with us. We're the body. We're what was left here. Amen? So in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So the, the thing that existed was not good. It was dead. It was without
without form. It was without void. It was just there. Amen? And God moves on it on the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness, because it was dark before he said light. It was dead. It was in darkness. He says light, light comes, and it was good. And so God divides the light from the dark. Amen? Amen? All right, John chapter 3, verse 16 through 21. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. Right. God's not condemning them. They're already condemned. Right. We're all, we were already <laughs> condemned when we got here. Praise the Lord. And this is the condemnation that light... Remember that light? Light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Right. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are done by God, or accomplished in God. Not by the man, but in God. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. The renewal of the creation has been done by the same word who made it in the beginning. There is no inconsistency between creation and salvation. No. Praise the Lord. We've been taught that salvation was about redeeming us from our sins so that we would have a future in heaven. Now that's true, but it's incomplete. Jesus coming in the flesh is a reminder that we were created beings before we were fallen beings. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. We were in Christ Jesus before the foundation of the world. So we were already created beings before we were ever fallen beings. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And before we were fallen beings. And we were created beings before we were redeemed beings. God hasn't given up on his original intention. Come on. This isn't like he had to change plans somewhere in the middle of the no. thing. This is still the same plan. It's still exactly what he wanted to do. This is the plan that God had for us at creation. Yes. Yes. The good news is Jesus came to restore everything that had been lost in the fall. Jesus reflected God's image in one human life, the way Adam was intended to do. Adam had the ability. Yes, he did. All right, back to Genesis uh, verse 26 this time. Genesis 1, 26 and 27. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, and in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them, and he gave them all this authority. Yep. Same kind of authority Jesus had. Yep. Praise the Lord. All right, go to chapter 3, verse 7. And the eyes of them were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves. No, uh, it's chapter three. I don't think that's three. Chapter three, verse seven. Well, what, I'm, what I want, I'm not going to look that up right now. But nevertheless, what I want is to say is what the scripture says in verse, maybe it's 27, but he says, and God breathed. Now, they were created. But it says God took the dust of the earth in another scripture further past this one. And I think it's in chapter 3, but nevertheless. He looks down. He sees this creation. It's kind of like the dead bones yeah. of Ezekiel. And then God breathes the breath of life into them. And they become living beings. Amen? Not living doers. 
live in fear. And the Lord God formed man in the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Man became a living soul. Now, he was already a spirit, but now he becomes a living personality, a living human. <clears throat> Praise God. So we don't glorify God by becoming Christians. We glorify God by becoming fully who God created us to be. Jesus glorified God by being fully alive. And he showed us what a whole, complete, fully human life looks like in the flesh. Yep. Praise the Lord. Colossians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. So with all of our effort to try to be this spiritual thing, we're missing it. This is about being fully human. And you can't be fully human unless you're spiritually alive. But the spiritual part of you is no greater than the physical part of you in the eyes of God. And the reason is that we can reach dead people who have bodies. But have no spirit. No, they're not spiritually alive to God. They have a spirit, but it's dead as far as God is concerned. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. So all of the Godhead, everything that there is of God, is in Christ. And we are made complete in him. We're made fully human in Jesus. Oh, praise God. I don't know if I'm making sense, but I'm telling you, we can just go around like humans. Like regular, normal people and lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Not because of my humanity, but because of my total humanness in Christ. In other words, I know in my flesh there dwelleth no good thing. It ain't going to heal anybody. It's not going to do anything. But this flesh, when it's made fully alive, it's integrated with the spirit. The spirit and the flesh become one and I don't have to act it out. I just praise the Lord. And if you get to the place where this becomes a real reality to you, your shadow yes. will cause people to be healed because it's no longer about you. It's about Christ in you, the ability to do this, which makes you fully human. Human like we've never seen humans since the, since the Garden of Eden until Jesus. The reason Jesus seems so strange to us is because we're all living as lesser humans, even though we've been restored to our total humanity. So instead of trying to act like I'm spiritual, just be human, born again. And Christ in you will do the work, and you won't be freaking people out all the time and acting, you know, all bizarre like you've got something. Just know you've got something. Right? Have you ever seen really, really wealthy people? I'm talking about billionaires, millionaires. Most of the time, they look like somebody making 30 grand a year. Why? Because they don't have to prove anything. They can do whatever they want to do. they got the ability. They have the resources. They don't have to you know, get the designer suit to prove that I got money. I got so much money, I could run around here in my boxers and flip-flops for the rest of my life, and nobody would probably say anything. He's eccentric. Now, that's because he's a billionaire. If you're making 30 grand a year, you're probably going to jail. <laughs> Praise God. But I'm saying this, we have, we have tried to do things that we weren't intended to do. Yes. We're supposed to be fully human beings, completely human. Yes. The way no human has been since the garden. Yes. Jesus is the only one that came and lived a fully human yes. life, integrated connected totally with God. Yes. That's what God's trying to do for us. Yes. Forever we're going to be humans. Yes. Yes. How about we learn to enjoy being a human instead of thinking about how we're going to escape this thing. Yes. You're not. That's right. Amen. Praise the Lord. You are complete in Him. 
Jesus showed us that the flesh can be fully inhabited by the Spirit. That's what that scripture was telling us in Colossians. All the fullness of the Godhead dwelt in him bodily. And we are complete in him. In fact, Jesus showed us that becoming fully human requires becoming fully spiritual. There's no hope for humanity to be fully human without being fully spiritual. Without the Spirit of God, they're dead. That's why we see what we see in the world. It's also why we see what we see in the church. When Jesus took on flesh, he waded into the brokenness and the sickness of Adam's estranged mind, estranged from God. And yet he did it victoriously. Praise God. Every day of his 33-year life in the flesh, Jesus fought a war with the Adamic nature. And he was tempted in every way that we are to doubt, to question, to disbelieve. Right? I and mean, that's the problem. And that's the battle that he fought every minute of every day for 33 years in his flesh on this planet. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies. How many of you heard that before? Yeah. Oh, we're going to sacrifice this body. No, we're going to present it to God so that his grace can operate in it the same way his spirit operates. Amen. Amen. You're perfect in Christ. Your spirit is as perfect as it's ever going to get. It's one with God. It's it and God are one. You can't separate it. The fullness of the Godhead dwells in you. So God is saying, give me your body the same way. Not not surrender it to sacrifices and, and, and not doing this or not doing that, but give it to God as though I'm complete now. I'm totally everything I need to be. I don't need to do something else with this body to make it acceptable to God because I've got grace. That's what grace is for. Amen? Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. How do you renew your mind? To the word. Yep. Jesus. Yep. Right? Exactly. Praise God. If we don't think of ourselves as Jesus, this isn't going to work. Amen. Amen. You were created in the image of God. You are not God. I'm not saying you're God, but I am saying this. You are filled with the fullness of the Godhead. Amen? The only way we can be like Jesus is to be fully human. If he wanted us to be like him before he came to earth to show us God, he would have stayed there and we would have had to gone there as spirits. Renewing of your mind. Renew your mind. What does it say? By the word, to the word of God. Mm-hmm. Jesus came to reverse everything that unraveled in the fall. Mm-hmm. And the solution, Jesus carried the Adamic nature to the cross so that God himself could undo the catastrophe of the fall. In Jesus' fully human life, we see what Adam could have been. Therefore, we see what we can be, what we are to be. We have a chance to start over as a full reflection of God's image. That's what Jesus is talking about when he says, all authority has been given unto me, therefore go. All this authority that we had back there in Adam, now you got it again. And what does he say to do? Lay hands on the sick, cast out demons. Raise the dead. Heal the sick. You 
what I did, what I did. But do it like I did it. You got to do it by the Spirit of God. Housed in this flesh. Quit trying to make the flesh the spirit. Right. And quit trying to make the spirit the flesh. Come on. They have become one if you just acknowledge it, if you'll just recognize it. We are one. Yes. We're not spirit body. We are fully human. The way we were created in the first place with the spirit of God and a human form. Yes. So live in that authority. I don't think Adam was going around to the fig trees going, Shabba, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Give me fig trees. <laughs> no, he just went to the fig tree and got a fig. Yeah. When the animals, rather than being unruly, and, or, or, or rather than being tame and timid and so forth, if they were at all unruly, he just spoke to them. Yes. Just like Jesus did with the ocean, with the sea. Right. Peace be still. Yes. He didn't get up and do a dance. He didn't get up and flip and flop and roll around on the floor. He didn't get slain in the spirit. He just said, peace be still. I hope I'm not popping your you know, Holy Ghost bubble here. I'm just saying, that stuff is for us. But it does absolutely nothing for the unbeliever. We think it does because we're all excited. And they're just freaked out. They just think there's something strange that if God is this neurotic and, and, and erratic, we don't know what he's going to do. We, t we even talk that way. We know what he's going to do. He's told us. And whatever it is, he's going to do it through us. Come on. Yes. Jesus' death on the cross was his final refusal to be bound to Adam's destiny of fallenness in this world. And the fact that he, he refused to accept death is evidence, amen, by his resurrection. He wasn't going to let death be the end of human life. We have an advocate at God's right hand, a human being. You better get that straight because... When you see God, you're going to see Jesus, and he's a man. Yes. Yep. Whoa, hallelujah. I, we, I know we know that, but I don't think we think it very much. God, seated, is a man. Yes. 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 Amen. Come on. A human being, a Jew, a son of Adam, and the di divine son of God incarnate. We are seated together, it says, in our fully human, spiritually alive selves. That's what's seated with him in heavenly places. Praise God. Unrestricted access to God. Romans chapter 6, verses 6 through 11. I'm not picking on anybody. I mean, I'll tell you, I've, I, I've, we've already done, in fact, Dan, uh, Mike's got some <coughs> video of me dancing. <laughs> That's more my wife has, <laughs> praise the Lord. I think we danced two, three times. First time or two, I don't remember because I was, I'd had quite a bit to drink. <laughs> praise the Lord. That was a long time ago. Relax, praise the Lord. <laughs> but uh, the last time was at my youngest daughter's wedding which was about five, six years ago, seven years ago, whatever. And that'll probably be the last time it happens. Because all the kids are married now, praise the Lord. I'm just not a dancer. I mean, I never really wanted to be a dancer, but... Well, there you go. It's a miracle. I took lessons, and I think somehow... Somehow, my mother made me, you know, when we were kids. And so uh, I think somehow it created some kind of blockage or something. Anyway, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Not off in never, never land, but now. 
you've already been buried with him. You've already been crucified with him. Now you are alive. Praise the Lord. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ is being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise. In other words, so you too. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. Forget about sin. Quit thinking about sin. Quit dealing with sin. Quit worrying about it. And move on to being alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Yes. Our only way out of bondage was for Adam and his entire race to die. Come on, and a new race be brought to life. At the cross, the first Adam died. At the resurrection, a new race of Adam was given life. Yeah. And the life that was given was the same life that he had originally. Yeah. Otherwise, it wouldn't be called redemption. Redemption is put back, restored to your original condition. Right. Jesus said he was the second Adam or the last Adam. Yes. Amen. Amen. He lived the way Adam was supposed to live, but didn't. Yes. I mean, do we want to keep falling? I mean, I, I know once saved, always saved. I'm not arguing that. I'm just saying we are, we're saved, but the problem is we're not understanding what we're saved for. Yeah. We're saved to be perfect, total, completely human. And the only way you can do that is by grace. You, as I said, your spirit was made perfect the moment you were born again. But your body has to be renewed to the Word, to, to Christ. Your body has to start functioning in unison or in cooperation with your spirit. And when it happens, it happens just like little kids learn to walk. They just... Take off one day. I mean, you watch them, they're crawling, they're dragging themselves, they're doing every, all, everything except walking. And you think, my God, this is the dumbest kid. They'll never learn. I mean, some kids are like a year and a half old before they walk. But all of a sudden, one day, you look up and there they go. Yeah. It's like, how, where did that come from? Innately, something in them tells them, I'm supposed to be upright on, I'm a biped. You know, they don't know that, but that, that something in them tells them, I'm supposed to be up walking. The dog's down here. The cat's down here. I'm not supposed to be here. Right. Amen? Yeah. Jesus had this awareness, this innateness in him that says, yes. I do this because I know who I am. Yeah. Just because you don't know who you are doesn't mean I don't know who I am. Yeah. You see, when we really understand and see this, this for what it really is, the vehicle through which God works. Mm -hmm. Then we'll quit focusing all the time. See, I think, we, I think we have to do these other things to offset the negative things that we know we do in this body. Mm -hmm. So we think that body can't be working in this environment. But this one can. Yeah. <laughs> right, because it's way more spiritual. It's not any more spiritual than the other one. It's just stranger. Because I, I'm telling you, I've struggled with this for a long time. I, go, I look through, the, I don't see any of this stuff happening anywhere in the Bible. So why is it we're drawn to it? Why is it we got to have it? Why is it we think it ain't, God isn't here unless we're all rolling in the aisles? I want us to be all totally, fully, completely human. Yes. Yes. I want us to be like Jesus. Yes. And God has already declared us that way. Yes. So why do we want to keep trying to make something else out of it than what it is? Come on. B, if you operate according to the Spirit, you're going to be more human than you've ever been. Mm -hmm. You'll be more fully alive, more complete, more at peace, more contented, more fulfilled. Because in each one of us, the thing that drives us is this desire, amen, to be that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 
Because, why? Because we know that's what we're supposed to be. Something in us tells us that's what we're supposed to do. We know we're supposed to lay hands on the sick and every one of them supposed to get healed. We know that we're supposed to speak the things that are not as though they were and they become whatever it is we're saying because we know innately we left a garden but in that garden we had all this authority, we had all this power and somehow it's like the Beatles said we got, there's somehow there's a way to get back home again. Once there was a way to get back home again, I guess is the way it goes. Or is it Joni Mitchell or somebody? We got to get back to the garden. I mean, why? Because there's something inside of us that tells us this is our identity. This is what we're supposed to do. This is the thing that, that causes us to do all kinds of crazy stuff sometimes because we know this can't be right. I know I'm supposed to be more than this. I know I'm supposed to do more than this. I know I'm supposed And how can we not know that if we read the scripture at all and see that he is the older brother? We are like him. We are supposed to be a replication of him. We are supposed, we were born again. Crucified with Christ. Fallen humans can become fully human because of Jesus. As the son of Adam, talking about Jesus, and the son of God, he paved the way for us to end Adam's reign in our life by becoming children of God. What happened to Adam when he fell? Now all of a sudden, everything he does, he has to do by his flesh. Right. Sweat. The woman. Out of pain and birth. We die because of Adam, but we have new life because of Jesus. Yes. Our human lineage is in Adam. Our spiritual lineage begins with Jesus, the last Adam. Jesus' resurrection makes him the firstborn from the dead and the beginning of a new race of human beings. Jesus didn't come to make us better people. He came to make us new people. With full, complete life. He calls it abundant life. Nothing missing. Nothing lacking. Fulfilled. He came to make you fully human. Not to make you some bizarre alien. He came to make you the very best version of yourself. God's image. Because only Jesus lived such a life. Only Jesus is qualified to restore to you such a life. Philippians chapter 1, verses 20 and 21. According to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. Fully human. For to me to live is Christ. To die is gain. Chapter 2. Verses 5 and 6. You want to meditate on something, meditate on this a while. You know, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Praise the Lord. He's talking about Jesus. He was in the form of man. Amen. He was also in Christ Jesus being in the form of God, but he was in the form of a man, yes, right? right? In the body. Mm 
God and not robbery in that body to be equal with God. If you've got eyes to see, literally every part of life around you is at odds with the way things are supposed to be. Don't, we, don't you say that? This is not right. I mean, you watch the news sometimes and you say, this, this, is just, this is insane. How can it be so bizarre? How can it be so messed up? Because we've got half humans running around here. And half the church is half human. Not realizing that they have been born again to be fully human beings. Completed human beings. To be fully human, we've got to be fully one with God. Can't happen any other way. You've got to know that it's Christ in you. As Jesus was, is, so are you. Now, in this present world. Fully human. That means spiritually alive humans. Connected with God. Fully spiritual. Fully human. As Jesus is, so are we. Human bone, just a minute, let me finish. Human bone with God's life. Human bones, human flesh, but God life. And the sooner we get there, the sooner we quit thinking we got to conjure up something in order to lay hands on the sick. Quit thinking, about, quit thinking about results. Just do what you do naturally. Someone says, we are naturally supernatural. The problem is we're trying to make supernatural be different than natural. And it's only unnatural for dead people. It's absolutely natural. It's the most normal thing in the world for us to be supernatural. We speak to things that are not. Shelly and I were talking... About the weather. She said, I'm, you know, I'm going to get upset with this pretty soon. I said, let me know before you do. <laughs> because it could get ugly out here. You know? Jesus calmed storms. He stopped yeah. the waves. He, 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 he speak to the wind, you know. Yeah. And he didn't get up and have a, you know, a special meeting. Yeah. He just got up and did it because it was an aggravation. He healed people because that was not their intended condition. Right. It's what he found, but it wasn't what they were supposed to be. They were created in God's image. And everything Jesus did was try to bring people back yes. to fully human condition. Not He wasn't trying to send them off in some... I mean, when you hear him even talking about that, he, doesn't, he sounds like he's talking about getting a, you know, a tooth pulled. And he's talking about going out and casting out demons. And, and, ch- and he's acting like... Well, this is just a natural, normal thing for you to do now that you have the Spirit of God in you. Yeah. See, we, we defeat the very purposes of God when we try to make ourselves look spiritual instead of just being spiritual. Because the truth yeah. is, we don't really know what spiritual looks like outside of Jesus. Yeah. And Jesus just did his thing. Yes. Amen. 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 Hey, doesn't that make you feel a little more confident that, look, this isn't about me. This is about Jesus. Be healed in Jesus' name. Yeah. Right? Be delivered in Jesus' name. Yeah. Be set free in Jesus' name. Uh, I realized why I was to be here.
Christ in you. Yes, praise the Lord. I appreciate the lesson. Thank you, Hallelujah. Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. So again, what we're saying is we've made, even, even in our efforts to be spiritual, which is really effortless, I mean, you either you are or you aren't, we have created religious things. Now, we say, okay, well, we're not religious. I mean, we, we believe in the grace of God. We believe, we, we don't, we're not, you know, all hung up on rituals and so on and so forth. No, we, we just create our own. We'll, we'll leave the others because they don't make sense to us, but we'll create others. So now we've got, you know, you've got to go someplace to be in a healing service. You've got to go to see some guy who has had healings, you know, in his ministry. I'm telling you, it undermines, instead of having our minds renewed to the word, the, the word is Jesus. He is the word. We've already established that twice here. What did Jesus do? He laid hands on the sick. He just said, I and my father are one. We'll, we'll never be the church, we'll never be the body of Christ until we function like the body of Christ. Right. You can have all of the other kind of atmospheres and all of the other you know, things going on, but it doesn't make us like Christ. It makes us a poor imitation. That all it does, it just, it, it feeds our old nature, the Adamic nature, instead of our Christ nature. Come on. I mean, come, this is what he's trying to get us to understand. Everything that's ever going to be done on your behalf is done. Your spirit has been made new. You are a new creature. Amen? And your body has been filled with God, grace. So you don't have to, you don't have to see them as two separate entities anymore. They're one. They could not be one if it hadn't been for God, for Christ in you. But because they are, you have the identical situation that Jesus had. And identical to what Adam had in the beginning. Yes. The only difference between the first Adam and the second Adam was the second Adam had a clue. Right. He knew who he was. Yes. He looked in here and found himself and said, the spirit of the Lord is on me. Yes. Amen. Because he has anointed me. Yes. Amen. To heal the sick, cast out demons. Yes. You know, all of these things. How about we do that? How about we find ourselves in here when if you can find Jesus, you found yourself. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. And say, the spirit of the Lord is upon me yes. because he has anointed me yes. with the anointed one yes. to do everything he did. Yes. Yes. To be a real, fully human being for the first time. If you, if you can get this, you'll understand. Anxiety. Half of the anxiety we have is not about what's coming up. Half of the anxiety is about we're not who we think we ought to be. Right. We're not experiencing what we think we ought to experience. Right. If you were totally at one with this, if you were totally fully human again, you would be free indeed. Amen. There would be no stress. There'd be no lack. There'd be no fear. Just Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not worried about becoming some angelic being going to heaven. I'm going to heaven. Amen. I'm interested in this, the here and now that he left me in. I don't need to worry about being spiritual. I need to worry about being human enough to deal with what needs to be dealt with here. Praise the Lord. And we are. Every one of us. We just need to, to connect by focusing on Jesus. By 
having our minds renewed to him. We look at him, we say, that's who I am. That's Glory. what I do. Glory. That's what happens in my life. Thank you, Lord. That's what happens to people who come to me for prayer. That's what happens to people who reach out. Just like we said here. We don't need to worry about what to say. He said, I'll give you what to say. If you get in the place where you believe you're going to have the right words to say, I'll give them to you. Come on. How many of you know you can even say the wrong thing and they'll hear the right thing? <laughs> Amen. I preached some lousy messages and had people come up and say, that was really good. I know they didn't hear what I was preaching. Because <laughs> it didn't make sense to me. But you, you understand what I'm saying? We are complete in him. There's nothing lacking. Nothing. And I don't need to leave this body to do it. Because I'm going to have a body like this one forever. The only difference is it'll be motivated by the spirit instead of by the heart pump and all that kind of stuff. Praise the Lord. We've done all the dying we're doing. We're going to live forever. Let's live like that now. Amen. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. You know, there are people that do things, people that look at those things and wonder, how'd they do that? And then other people that look at it and say, what happened? We need to be the ones doing it. Instead of you going to find somebody else, how about let them come to you? Yes. How about you be the one that somebody's looking for? Yes. Because yes. you have, I mean, this is the whole point. I, I, I talked about this here a couple weeks ago, and I talked about it years ago, too. But I, I just got to tell you, I'm not, I, look, you don't have to do what I do, you know? But I'm just saying, it's a foolish person who doesn't take the experiences that other people have had to know that it's true and not take advantage of it. Right. That's actually the definition of an idiot. Right. I mean, if somebody else can tell you, I mean, this is why you hire people, you know, I'm not talking about me, but I'm talking about in a business or something. You hire people that can do stuff so you don't have to do it. And if you have to do it too, then one of you is redundant. One of, one of you needs to go. Right. you got to be able to trust, amen, that person to do what they're supposed to do. Well, God has given us everything. And we're like the lousy employee that keeps running to the bosses. And goes, How did you want me to do this? Hey, I, I've got 50,000 other things here I'm trying to do. I, I don't have time. No, this is not God, but I'm talking about from a, from a personal perspective. God is saying, I've given you everything. You got it all. You're hooked up. You, you got the power. You got it all. All you got to do now is just go do it. And we're, we're not doing it. We're, we're running off to go see somebody else. I, you know, I told you about going to Arizona. I mean, God, I, I'm dense. I know I'm slow. So then I had to go somewhere else, down to Arkansas. Then I had to end up going up to Minneapolis. Why? Because I was always looking for somebody else to do something for me that I didn't think I could do. And that was the message that God gave me. Now, you don't have to take it for yourself, but I think it's probably good information for anybody. I'm not against going and, you know, hearing speakers. and you know, I'm not against that. I'm just saying we put all this emphasis on somebody. When God told me when I was sitting there for two days waiting for this guy to pray for me, and he told me when I went away the second time a little depressed because the guy never did pray for me or prophesy over me or swing a dead cat, <laughs> amen, or rub a rabbit's foot or anything else, he just didn't. And God said, Nathan... What do you think he has that you don't have? Right. What are you going to go get from him that you don't already have? Right. You either have Christ in you, the hope of glory. You either have the fullness of the Godhead dwelling in you bodily, or you're not saved. Right. Now, if you're not saved, get saved. If you are saved, then get to doing the work of saved people instead of looking for somebody else to do it for you. Right. The only difference is that guy knows. No more power, no more authority, no more anything. Just he knows. He has renewed his mind to Jesus. Yes. Yes. Come on. And that's what you need to do. Yes. Yes.
That's what we all need to do if we're going to be fully human. And I don't think we're getting out of here unless we're fully human. Come on. Praise the Lord. Amen. Give him another hand clap. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. I love you all. God bless you. Go in the power of his spirit. Amen. Be the humans I know you are. <laughs>